Do you know that the first person outside um, of me to get a look at geometric unity was Jeffrey Epstein? How did he know I was working on this? I don't know. So your ideas that formed geometric unity was something that uh, his eyes have seen? I was pushed to talk to Jeffrey Epstein as one of the only people who could help me. No, 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 listen to <laughs> how, this. How does this, yeah, how does this connect? Okay, well, first of all, my old synagogue, my old shul was the conservative minion at Harvard Hillel. And I believe it's called Rosofsky Hall after Henry Rosofsky in the economics department, who was a Japan scholar, if I'm correct. And he became provost or dean of Harvard. I believe that that was built with Jeffrey Epstein's money. And I wondered, in part, whether the Jewish students at Harvard all sort of passed through a bottleneck of Harvard Hillel. So that was something I found very curious, but I don't know much about it. I also found that Jeffrey Epstein hanging around scientists, I don't think that either you or Joe exactly, I mean, got me correct uh, in your last yep. interchange. Uh, for the record, for people who haven't listened to the Joe Rogan program, Joe has claimed that Eric Weinstein was the only person who has gotten laid. Paid. The, oh, paid. And you said you also got paid as a young man, right? <laughs> I believe the word was laid, but uh, allegedly. My hearing isn't so good at age 55. Yeah. All right. Leaving that aside, yes. Um, what was Jeffrey Epstein doing hanging around all of these scientists? I don't think that was the same program that was about compromising political leaders and business people and entertainment figures. I think these are two different programs that were being run through one individual. And Joe seemed to think that I didn't think he was smooth. I thought he was glib. I think what Joe is really trying to get at is, is that I found his mysticism meretricious. He had a, an ability to deflect every conversation that might go towards revealing that he didn't know what he was talking about. Every time you started to get close to something where the rubber hit the road, the rubber wouldn't hit the road. And yet, can you help me untangle sure. the, the fact that you thought deeply about the physics of the nature of our universe, and Jeffrey Epstein was interested. How did he know? I wasn't really talking about this stuff until, you know, even my close friends didn't really know what I was up to. And yet you're saying he, he did not have sufficient brilliance to understand when the rubber hit the road. So why, why did he have sufficient interest and curiosity? I'll tell you what I thought. I have been waiting to find out, does my government even know I exist? Do you have an answer to that question? I have, a couple times the government has reached out to me. In general, there is zero interest in me, like less than zero interest. I find that fascinating. As far as you know, right? I mean- Well, that's what I'm trying to say. The question about not being able to see through a half silvered mirror you don't know what's going on hmm. behind the half-silvered mirror. To you, it's a, it's all you see is uh, is your reflection. But your intuition still holds. Like this is where I've mentioned that I, uh, this is where I'll say naive, dumb things. But I still hold on to this intuition that Jeff, not I'm not confident in this, but I I'm lean towards that direction that Jeffrey Epstein is the source of evil, not something that's underlying him. You have. He, you have a bias, it's different than mine. Our Bayesian priors are tutored by different life experiences. Yeah. If I was mostly concerned, like Sam Harris was is concerned, that people fill their heads with nonsense, I would have a very strong sense that people need order in the world, that they take mysterious situations, they build entire castles in the air, and then they go move in if they really get crazy. You know, the old saying is that neurotics um, build castles in the air and psychotics move in. <laughs> Coming from a progressive family, we had a different right. experience. It's really weird when the government is actually out to get you, when they actually send a spy, when they actually engage in disinformation campaigns, when they smear you. And if you've ever had that brought to bear on your family, you have a Howard Zinn sort of understanding of the country, which is different than having a, wow, do people believe crazy stuff because they watch too much TV. 
And both of these things have some merit to them, but it's a question of regulated expression. When do you want to express more Sam Harris and when do you want to express more Howard Zinn? And you can express both, correct? The one human being can express both? Sure, but there's a trade-off between them. In other words, most of most people, like the Michael Shermers of the world, are going to tilt very strongly to you know, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Right. So you're going to have that kind of energy. And then somebody else is going to say, how many times do I have to get hit on, uh, you, you know, how many times do I have to hammer my own thumb before I realize that there's a problem? So, you know, my feeling about this is, yes, people see patterns in clouds. They see faces and scripture and all sorts of things, and it's just random cloud patterns. Yeah. And it's also the case that there's tremendous pressure not to see conspiracies when conspiracies are relatively more common than the people who shout conspiracy theory will, will claim. So both of these things are true. And you have to ask, when do you express your inner Zen and when your inner Harris? And th yeah. those are different. And one sure. fundamental difference in you and I, biases aside, is you've actually met Jeffrey Epstein. And I am uh, listening to like reverberations years later of stories and narratives throughout the story. Luckily, I only met him once. And I, I think I had one or perhaps two phone conversations with him other than the one meeting. You can learn a lot in just a few words, right, from a human being. Well, that's true. But I think that the bigger issue was I saw something that I don't hear much remarked upon, which is Jeffrey Epstein is all there that there is. In other words, there's the National Science Foundation, National Institute of Health, Howard Hughes. There's all this stuff that kind of has the same feel to it, a little bit of variation and difference. Department of Energy. If you fall outside of that, there's just Jeffrey Epstein. That's what you're told. Yes. That's not quite true. There's Kavli. Maybe Jim Simons is now in the game. Peter Thiel has done some stuff. You had Yuri Milner and Mark Zuckerberg try. So there is other money running around. Templeton. But very strongly, there was a belief that if you're doing something really innovative and the system can't fund it because it's we become pussies, Jeffrey Epstein's your guy. So there's and that's, like this funnel that you're exactly. supposed to go through. That's right. And the idea is that you get called to the great man's house and, you know, the sort of uh, lubricious version of Ralph Lauren, you know, takes you in and asks you bizarre questions and maybe he has an island, maybe he has a plane. And, you know, when you're starved, uh, you know, somebody showing you a feast or when you're dehydrated in a death's door and somebody says, oh, you know, I, I have a well. <laughs> um, you know, that's what it is. And so the thought is, wow, can you, can somebody get some effing money into the science system so that we don't have super creeps uh, trying to learn all of our secrets ahead of time? WTF, what is your problem with transparency and taxpayer dollars? Just all of you, you wouldn't have a country. You'd be speaking German. So essentially, you believe that human beings would not be able to, in the when the money is lacking in the system, like in research. We produce public goods. You and I are meant to produce public goods. Now, I sell athletic greens, and I sell Theragun, and I sell Unagi scooters, and Chili Pad. I gotta be honest, I love these products. But I didn't get into this game for the purpose of selling. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how do you have an FU lifestyle? But you know something, Lex? I don't know why you built this channel. It's kind of a mystery. Yeah, when, I don't know why. I'll tell you why I built my channel. The freedom. It's gonna be a lot harder to roll me this time in an alley. Yeah. I got rolled multiple times. And my point is, <laughs> I didn't want to become a, a celebrity. I didn't want to become well-known. But it's a lot harder to roll somebody who's getting, you know, I, th I think I'm, I don't know if this is mistaken, but I think I'm the math PhD with the largest number of followers on Twitter. And there was nothing you could do before. I mean, again, to put a little responsibility on you, so you've created something really special for the distribution of your own ideas. I mean, uh, but because it's not necessarily currently scalable, you also, perhaps you and I have the responsibility of giving other people also a chance to spread their ideas. I mean, Joe Rogan did this very effectively for a bunch of people that- That's why they're angry at him, because he's a gatekeeper and he let all sorts of people through that gate 
from Roger from Roger Penrose to Alex Jones to uh, Jordan Peterson to I mean even well, first of all to you and, to Abby and, Martin to Abby Martin to, to Barry Weiss yeah that's and, the problem <laughs> well but you you have not successfully built up a thing that allows that to carry oh, that no, forward no 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 we are all vulnerable to reputational attack. Because what happens, you see, the problem, Lex, is, is that you are now an institution at some level. You walk around with all this equipment in a duffel bag, uh, the, last suit, suit. the last suit you'll ever need, and um, you have the reach of something like CNN to people who matter. Okay, so now the question is, how do we control something that doesn't have a board, doesn't have shareholders, doesn't have to make SEC filings, FCC filings. So the best answer they have is, well, we just have to destroy reputations. All it takes is for us to take something that gets said or done or alleged. And I think it's incredibly important. One of the things people don't understand is, is that I'm, I'm going to fight general reputational attacks, not because some people don't deserve to have their reputations drawn, drag through the mud, but because it's too powerful of a tool to hand it to CNN, MSNBC, right. Princeton, Harvard, the State Department. Yes. But is, some of it is also- JP Morgan. A, uh, Muhammad Ali style being good enough at uh, doing everything you need to do without giving enough meat for the reputational attacks. Not being afraid, but not giving enough meat. I don't see why the people who have good ideas have to lead lives that are that clean. If you can I do see, it. You can be messy, yeah. You should be able to be messy. That Otherwise, we're, we're suppressing too many people. Look. Too many, two billion minds, yeah. Can you believe Elon Musk smoked a blunt? I still, people tell me this. They, okay, I have discussions about Elon and people, uh, the Avi Loeb, the Harvard scientist, yeah. who's talking about Amuamua, that it might be alien technology. He told me his, he, he, this outside the box thinker, yeah, when speaking to me about Elon, said, th called him the guy who smoked, he smokes weed, He's <laughs> the blunt, in it. a dismissive way. Like this guy's crazy because he smoked some weed. I Good was looking at God. it. I was like, "Why? Uh, wow, wow!" Look, I think you should be able to have <laughs> consensual drug-filled orgies. Fuck perfect lives. Yeah, you should be allowed to be messy. Yeah, right. I, I take back my statement. I'm just saying, respectability is the unique prison where all of the gates are open and the inmates beg to stay inside. It's time to end their prison of respectability because it's too effective of a means of sidelining and silencing people, including it is better that we have bad people in our system than this idea of no platforming people who are beyond the pale because it's such a simple technique. So how do we, uh, what's the heroic action here on the- Well, for example, having Ashley Matthews on my program. By the way, she was, absolutely um, delightful as a guest. She was, uh, she is polite in the extreme, far more polite than I am. And I had her right after Roger Penrose uh, as a guest because I wanted to highlight this program can go anywhere. We can talk to anyone. What about social media? You've started highlighting people being banned on social media. Uh, how do we fight this? Like if you get banned from social media, so you're saying nobody will stand up to me. Uh, well, just yeah. figure out what your incentive structure is before. Assume that they're, assume that I get banned on social media because somebody wants to make sure that my message doesn't uh, interfere with the dominant narrative. Yeah. Okay. What will happen, by the way, I'm very glad to be able to explain this on your show because that video will presumably be archived and they can't easily make you take it down. Okay. So what's gonna happen is, is that there'll be a whole bunch of very low quality bot-like accounts that dog you every time you talk about me. Right. Dude, it's getting old, it's getting boring, we already heard you. Dude, that was like, let it go. Not a good look. Not a good look is one of my favorites. 
But what about the high profile ones? Well, then, then you'll get a few high profile ones and some of the high profile ones command armies. Right. Like at some point I had 10,000 people using exactly the same templated tweet, uh, tweeting at me. It was just actually, it got to the point where it was funny because everybody said, did you, did you hear that in a hipster coffee shop? And I was like, why are you all suddenly talking about hipster coffee? It's yeah. hilarious. Um, those things will cause you to think better of it. You'll start to see your follower count go down because it's easy to give you a bunch of bot-like follows and then just pull them. So I think that it's pretty well known how, and then maybe your account will be suspended and it can't be revoked and you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then three days later, you'll be told it was an error. So let me push back. I just don't see not defending you. Like, okay, so what are the things you would do that given that I can actually talk to you yeah. offline, that that would uh, make me not defend you. Uh, well, it's, first of all, <laughs> I can't. I mean, no, but because, I can imagine. Yeah, but, some, but, but all of us have yeah. things. If, if somebody says, "Do you hear what your boy Lex said about you?" Mm -hmm. what, what what did Lex say about me? Oh, he said you were flawed, dude. Oh shit. Yeah. You know, they so distrust because none of us want to stand behind flawed people. That's why you have everybody rushing to say, I, I neither condemn nor condone. I know I don't condemn nor, you know, why, what is that? Mm -hmm. We're all trying to By say- the way, for the record, I said that Eric is smarter than me and a brilliant human being, but flawed like all humans are. My point is I've now come up with a new policy, which is I don't care what my friends have done. I am not disavowing my friends, not right. because they didn't do the wrong thing. Maybe they did do the wrong thing. I don't know. What's the value of friendship if you, if that's not, not what... that? Like, for example, we've had the situation with Brian Callen. Brian Callen was featured recently in the Los Angeles Times. I know nothing about the allegations. I can't. I didn't even know Brian at the time, right? I've known him for roughly the time I've been in Los Angeles, maybe a year and a half. Mm -hmm. During that period of time, I've never seen anything wrong. Now I'm in a situation, well, what do you think he did? Do you think he didn't? It's like, you know what? I don't know. But I do know this. Everyone's entitled to have friends because we can't afford isolated people. And if your friends do the wrong thing, they're still your friends. Yeah. And if they do terrible, terrible things, you bring that up with them privately. And it's not my responsibility to disavow in public. You know, we've had this situation that I don't like where, you know, particular people that I've been close to, uh, I'm put under tremendous pressure to disavow them. What do you think now about your buddy? I like Dave Rubin, all that kind of stuff. Here's the thing. Just because my there's... friends are my friends. Yeah. I don't disavow my friends. Yeah. We all need to make a statement that we will not be brought under pressure to disavow our friends, our family members, because mass murderers are dangerous the more isolated they become. It is not a good idea to constantly push to isolate people. Yes. And it's dangerous. And, and so- it sends a signal to everybody else to uh, to fit and, in, to be more actually right. cynical about the human so my feeling, left to each if other. If I find out you've been selling heroin to elementary school students, you're still my friend and I will not be disavowing you. And if I have a problem with you selling heroin to elementary school students during school hours, I will bring it up with you privately mm -hmm. because we don't need to hear my voice added to that condemnation. Are there things that you could do that would cause me to say, actually, F this guy? Yeah, above and beyond that. But simply doing the wrong thing, I think we've gone down a terrible path. I think isolated people are about the most dangerous thing we could have in a heavily armed society. So I, I deeply agree with you on, uh, on Brian Callen and on all these people that quote unquote got canceled. Uh... And I'm not saying that they, I don't, I, don't, I don't know the truth value because we can't. And even if I did know the truth value, I'm not setting up an incentive structure for the dis personal destruction as a means of letting institutions combat the fact that individuals are the last thing that can say, none of you guys make any sense. 